are so honored, so privileged to have you gathering with us. We have three wonderful Easter Resurrection Sunday services happening today. And uh, if you're new, my name's Tim. I'm one of the pastors here at GT. And what a day to be alive. What a day to be gathered together and celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. That we gather together to make the declaration the tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. And Jesus promised what he said he would do. And so this morning, what I want to do for a few moments is I just want to look at one of the early accounts of the first Easter resurrection story, one of the first narratives that we have of why we are gathered here today and really look at the validity of that story, but also look at how, if this is true, then what does this mean for me today? If the claims of Christianity are in fact true, then what does this mean for me today? You know, Easter Sunday is celebrated annually by the Christian church all over the world to celebrate what, have, what some have called the greatest story of all times. And yet as Christians, we long believe that this is more than just a fictional story or a mythological story, but rather the story of Easter is a historical story about a historical event. An event that happened in which the world is now a different place. And this event took place in real time, in real history, in which God did something once and for all through his son Jesus to accomplish what no other person could ever accomplish. And by accomplishing what Jesus did, that being dying on a cross and then resurrecting to new life three days later, he made a way for all of humanity who put their faith, hope, and trust in him as Lord to be made right with God, their heavenly Father, to essentially become the sons and daughters of God. And so this historical event that happened 2,000 years ago was and is the greatest day in all of history. An event that has literally shaped all of history, all of the world, and an event that every person that lives in this world will have to look at and evaluate and say, do I believe this event to be true? Now, many people for many years have long conversed and dialogued and debated about what makes Christianity so unique or different than the other major religions of the world. In fact, many people have often said things like, aren't all religions the same? Don't they all tell the same story just in a different way or from a different lens? And that's been a great dialogue debate that has been happening for many, many years. But I wanna to propose to you this morning that Christianity is something that is unique and different from every other major religion of the world. You see, when you study this and you look at the major religions of the world, you often see that they give what's called good advice or good counsel on what people need to do in order to arrive at something or in order to become something or in order to receive something. But why Christianity is so different than that is because Christianity is not a religion of good advice or good counsel, though it may involve that in places. But Christianity is a religion of good news. Good news about an event that happened in real time, in real space, in real history, where God the Father, through his son Jesus, accomplish something that no human being could ever accomplish. You see, you can never say enough prayers or do enough good deeds to ever earn your way into this thing called salvation or earn your way into heaven or utopia. But Jesus came and he lived amongst humanity 2,000 years ago and he lived a perfect life. And then he was falsely accused and died a martyr's death. But then he didn't stay in the grave, but he resurrected three days later, thus defeating death, 
hell and the power of the grave so that all who put their faith in him once again can be called the sons and daughters of God. And so Christianity is not good advice. It is not just good counsel, but beloved, Christianity is good news. Jesus is alive. The tomb is empty and resurrection has broken into our world as we know it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, real quickly, I want to look at John's gospel. It's one of the accounts of the first Easter story. John was a follower of Jesus. He was one of his disciples. And in the Bible, there are actually four different accounts about the life of Jesus. But John, when he writes his account, he's writing as one who is very connected to Jesus. He was personal. He was in a personal relationship with Jesus. And he gives us a great window into that first resurrection story. So our text is John chapter 20, verses one through 18. We're gonna read a lot of scripture here today, but there's some powerful things in this story. So I want us to listen here. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And Jesus said, they have taken, or sorry, they, and she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. And Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb for they were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Let's just pause for a moment and let's just acknowledge John, who is writing this text, is obviously giving a lot of his bias here, right? <laughs> I mean, in the first four verses, he says, I'm the one whom Jesus loved, by the way. And then he says, and by the way, me and Peter, we were having this race, and I just want all of church history to know this. For the next 2,000 years, I beat Peter in the race. I, I arrived at the tomb first, all right? So verse five, he stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside, and he also noticed the linen wrappings lying there. While the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For until then, they still had not understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. And Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she stooped and looked in. And she saw two white robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord. She replied, and I don't know where they have put him. And she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. And it was Jesus, was Jesus. Jesus. 